in our previous videos we have already discussed about how to handle little complex state with the help of use reducer hook and we have also discussed about prop drilling and how we can get it from it with the help of use context hook so now in this session let's combine these two hooks together and let's see how it is going to benefit you hello everyone welcome back to my channel i'm nisha singla and this session is all about how to use use reducer hook along with context api so that we can easily access the states in different components without any prop drilling so before proceeding with today's session please make sure you know you are comfortable with use context hook and use reducer hook so now let's start with today's session so if you remember that we have created this to do list with the help of use reducer hook where i can add any task like this and we can reset this and we can also delete this right so this thing we have built with the help of use reducer hook so now let's open the same code again and if i show you here we have this use reducer hook and here we have created this to do's component and this to do's component has a reducer where i have different action for adding a new task or to delete a task or to reset the task and then i have used this use reducer hook to initialize my state with the help of this reducer and initial state so to do's will hold all the to do's that i have and dispatch is basically a method that allows me to dispatch a action to my reducer so that i can execute my particular logic based on the action type if you go to the jsx part here you can see i have a simple text box that we, you can see here and then i have a separate component to do list where i'm passing my to do's my state and my dispatch and when you check the to do list i'm just displaying it in a simple list format and i'm just dispatching the action for delete fine so as of now if you see it's very simple because uh, i have most of the things in the to do's component only so far it is good and it is working and we have discussed it in the previous sessions but if you notice here that in the to do list component i have to manually pass this state and my dispatch action because i need to display my to do's so this is called prop drilling right i have to manually passing down the prop and it is okay because it is just a one component but let's assume a little more complex scenario maybe you have split your ui into different components in sub nested components so in that case manually passing it down to every component it is little complex and that we don't recommend for the complex component structure and we have discussed about it in the use context hook session right so what we are going to do now we are going to use uh, use context hook to hold my this state and this dispatch action so that i can access the particular state anywhere let's do it step by step let's talk about this one first if you check on ui i'm displaying my total to do's here it is coming from this heading right as of now it's just a simple h4 tag maybe i have a separate component uh, maybe a header where i'm displaying my total to do's let's quickly create a header component and let's quickly create this one let's mark it export and now when you go to to do list this to do's instead of displaying this heading i want to display my header component here right so we can simply import this one so i can say import header from this header component and now i can say something like this right and let me comment it as of now and check on your browser okay so here you can see we are getting this to do's but now i want to display if i add my to do's in the list you will notice i have two to do's but here it will not update i need to display my total to do's here the way we had earlier right so in that case if you know i need to have my to do's so that i can get the length out of it fine so in that case i need this to do's detail in the header component so that i can use that so somehow i need to have my to do's in the header component so that i can get the length and of course maybe in future in the header component i need to do much more than that so that's okay but as of now let's keep it simple and i just need to have the length so in that case i either i have to manually pass the length from here something like this fine but that's what we don't want we don't want to do prop drilling right so for that what we can do i can use the context api and i can store my to dos in the context 
and then with the help of use context hook I can get that. So how to create a context that we have discussed right but creating a context is simple you have to create the context first of all I have already created a context in the previous session so I will use the same folder and earlier we have created a user context now let's create one more context as a to do's context. So here let's create a to do's context so for that you just need to import create context from react package and after that you just need to create an instance of your context so I'm giving it a name of to do's context and here it will return the context right if you have some default value you can pass I don't have it as of now and at the end you just need to export your context and you are done with the first step that creating a context now on this context I have to attach my state or I have to pass my data so to this context when you provide the state all those state can be accessed by the child component with the help of use context hook. so this is the next step that you have to provide uh, value to your context so that we do usually where we have the logic of your state so you have to put this logic at the top level so that you can pass it down further to the child component so for me to do's logic is basically in the to do's dot js file so here I'm going to use my providers so for that you need that created context that you have created with to do's context once you have imported it now on this you have to use providers and to your provider you have to provide the to do state fine so for that in the JSX you just need to wrap like this to do's context and here it will give you provider provider will have a value property and here you have to pass your data that you want to provide to your provider or to your context and at the end you have to close this one like this so in this value you can provide anything as of now let's do it one by one initially I just need this to do's so what you can do you can do something like this and here I can do something like this to do's list and here I can say to do's okay and if you know in ex6 we can do something like this so it's similar like doing this so I'm giving to do's to my this object and this one I'm passing here to my provider so now my context knows about this value and this value is holding my to do's state fine so now this to do's context have the data so any component that come in within this it can access this data with the help of use context hook like that is the third step so where exactly I want to use to do as of now I want to use it in the header component so move to the header component and here I want to use my context so how you will do first you have to import your use context hook like we have use create context we have use context that will also come from react package and afterward you have to import your context that you have created that is your to do's context so what now you have to do so now all you have to do you just need to get the data with the help of this use context and passing down your to do's context so automatically in this to do's context whatever value you have given that will you will be able to get it here so if you simply do console.log to check what exactly you are getting here so here ideally it will return your value this one that is pointing to this data move to your browser let's open developer tool console tab and here you can see it's returning an object which is returning me a state and currently I have two to do's so it is returning me the two to do's perfect it means I'm able to get the state inside my header so all you have to do here you can say simply so as it is returning an object here you can see so it has one to do so you can use object destructuring syntax and, can, and you can get the to do's only from here and here you can say to do's dot length so let's get it from this one now save the changes And let's close this developer tool and initially it's zero right it means it's calculating now so let me add few tasks you can see it's updating and if you try to delete any task 
it will also update here. So I'm able to get this state in the header component without using any prop drilling. So that's how you can use context hook with your state. Um, and the same rule go with use state hook also that we did in the last session, right? But this is with use reducer hook. Now let's move further and let's use use context hook here as well. As of now in to do's list, I need two things. I need to do's and I need dispatch. Let's first remove this to do's and get it from your use context hook. So in the to do list component, I have to do the same thing. I have to import use context hook and I have to import my created context that I have created, right? That is my to do context. So we can import that one as well. And after this same thing, you have to get to do's from your context with the help of use context hook. So now we can get rid this to do's from the prop and we have to remove it from here as well. So I don't need to pass it as a prop now because I'm reading the state from my context. So when you save the changes, let's test this one. It should not break, right? It's working fine, right? So it means from here also we, get, we have removed my prop. Now the last part is this dispatch because my to-do list is also using dispatch because ideally uh, the use reducer hook basically depend on two things to get the data this state and to dispatch a new action we have this method right so what we can do I can hold this dispatch also in my context I can do something like this fine so now instead of doing it like this we can get rid from this prop and now in the to-do list component so here in the object destructuring syntax my context now return two things to-dos and the dispatch so dispatch now I can get rid from this prop save the changes and it should work as it is perfect so now if you check your to-dos component you can see we are not passing any prop manually it's just a one component as of now but of course it will definitely uh, give you some relief when you have a very complex or nested component structure that exactly it, it's very useful so I hope you got the idea that how to combine your context API and your use reducer or use state hook to get a better design you just need to remember that when you talk about context API re-rendering is there that I have also discussed in the previous video so now we have to work on the optimization part how you can optimize your rendering part when you use context API there we have more hooks for optimization like use memo and use callback and we are going to talk about these hooks in the upcoming sessions but for now this is all about today's session and I hope you liked the video if you liked it don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe my channel till then keep learning we'll see you in the next video thank you